Welcome everybody. Good to see you. We're going to go ahead and start math. So today our learning target is, and let me move, let's start with the beginning of my lesson. Today we're going to use metric units of liquid volume. Yesterday, boys, yesterday we used of the U.S. standard units of liquid volume. Do you guys remember what they were? Who can tell me? Paxton. Heinz was one of them, but that wasn't the smallest. What other? Cups. We said, yep. Quarts. And, and we even talked about half gallons and ounces. Do you guys remember? Good, all right, two people waiting, let me admit them. So we are gonna have lots of times when we have to measure. Sometimes we'll be measuring liquid volume in liters or milliliters and that's in the liquid system. So it's not always in the US system. Can I have whole body surname? I need whole body, thanks sweetie. So we're going to use measure liquid vol, vol we're going to measure liquid volume using metric units today. We're going to still estimate and we might actually even get some problem solving in. Let's see how it goes. Okay? So first thing I wanted to do, I noticed some of you were on lesson 3.1. Did any of you struggle with creating a fraction? Raise your hand if that was something that was a little difficult. Okay, so that happened in my room. And so I'm gonna show you, let me quickly show you how you do that. How are you going to create a fraction when you're on Think Central? And I really want you to know how to do this because <clears throat> It's not as difficult as it seems. It's just understanding how to do it. So when we go to Think Central, when you get to lesson 3.1, some of you have already done it. You might have been a little frustrated. And if you haven't done it yet, lucky you, because guess what? I'm going to show you how it's done. Someone, someone on the show. Ta -ta. I'll show you how it's done. All right, so we were a little confused. It is a tool and it's sometimes these tools get in our way. So for example, this says find the length of the line segment. Use fractions as needed. Do you guys think I'm going to need a fraction to measure that line segment? Well, let's count how many inches. One, two, three and three and a half. So watch what happens. When I click on the box, this toolbar kind of comes up. If you click on the fraction tool first, it's gonna mess you up. Don't do it. You first have to type in the number of whole inches, your whole number. And what did we say that was? Three. three. So I first type in the three to represent three inches. Then, Cooper, now what I get to do? Now I click on this symbol here. This is the symbol for fraction. When I click on that, I can then type the one for my numerator for one out of two equal parts, one half. Then I can X out. Now say you mess up and you type in the fraction first and you can't get the three in. You can click on the trash can. If you click on the trash can, it'll go back to normal. Then I can type three, fraction, one over two, and then X out of it. And then what is my unit? Three and a half inches. So very, it's not very difficult, but it's tricky, isn't it? Does that make sense now? Okay, so hopefully 
when you do that lesson, and I probably should have done it sooner, I apologize for anyone who has already been working on that. All right, I'm just gonna do the top four today because of time. We don't have time to do the bottom four, so let's just say seven times six. What does it equal? Let's say it three times. Seven times six equals 42. Seven times six equals 42. Excellent. So we've got 42. Eight times eight is 64. Eight times eight, eight, times eight equals six. Eight times eight is equals sixty-four. Seven is forty-nine. Nine. Forty-nine. Seven. Seven. Customary units of liquid volume. We did not get a chance to do this, and I thought it was something that would be good. So, turn to page. Oh, sorry. You guys are so good. 164. And let's just do a quick review. Page 164, 164. And we're gonna circle the best estimate. And I wanna show you again the difference between, and I'm gonna show my remote learners first, look at the screen. Here's your cups, then comes pints, then come quarts, half gallon and gallon. Remember, the the larger the capacity, the larger the unit should be. So, would we use two cups to fill a baby bottle or two quarts? Two cups. Two cups or two what? Two cups or two quarts? Two cups. Max million. Because one baby bottle. Max a million. What did you say? Help them out, Henrik. If you have two cups or two quarts to fill up a baby bottle, what would be the best estimate? Two cups. Two cups. Why do you think so? Because it's smaller. Yeah, it's smaller. Quarts are, it might be about one quart, right? Or not, depends on the bottle. That'd be a big bottle, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a real, real big bottle, boy, for big babies. <laughs> but it's not going to be two of these, would it? No. All right, number eight. Fish tank, five cups or five gallons? Yes, Abby. Five gallons. Five gallons, why? Because it's bigger and the cups would take forever. Cups would take forever. We're looking at gallons. All right. Number nine, one pint or a gallon? For be careful. One pint. Or you're gonna cook, you're gonna just heat up some water for some tea, one right? Pint. A gallon of tea for Gabe, what do you think? How about Gabe? Pint. One pint. All right, number 10. One cup or one pint? Maybe a glass of water before you go to bed. What do you think, Ellie? One cup. All right, Jensen. One cup or one gallon for your snow globe? One cup. Why? Because snow globes are really small. Very good. Haley Calendar, 30 cups or 30 gallons for the bathtub? 30 gallons. How do you know? Because the bathtub is not um, is bigger is big, not like 30 cups big. Excellent. Okay, so yesterday 
We did not get to do our exit ticket, but some of you did at home. I was really impressed. So those people who did their exit ticket yesterday, bravo. Um, I'm making it an exit entrance ticket today. So exit entrance ticket. If you did not do it, it's on your assignment from yesterday at home. Name the units of liquid volume from largest to smallest. unit then you're not going to get a three right unless you do largest to smallest if you want to get a four you need to include all of them even the ones we might not see once you have that done from largest to smallest turn it into the classwork basket if you are remote, make sure you click the turn in button. And I want to give a shout out to the kids who did do it at home. Let me say how responsible you are. Hopefully I can find it. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jensen Cook. You did a great job. Thank you for doing that. Haley. Calendar, shout out to you for being responsible. Astria, Leo, Henry, Charlie Van Rickley. So if I did not call your name, I did not get your exit ticket from yesterday's math assignment. Gavin, you turned it in with nothing on there. That's the second one I've gotten. So if you need help with that, I would love to help you. If you're not sure how to type on that document, I know you can get to it because you were able to turn it in. I just need you to type your answer so you can get some good grades for communicating your thinking. And Reese and Katie, I wanna make sure I get one from you guys. I know you did the last one. All right. I'm gonna give you about one more minute and then we're gonna move on. Name the units of liquid volume from largest to smallest. All righty. Just the ones we talked about yesterday, nothing other than what we've talked about. There's only six guys, so if you have like 12, something's wrong. We only talked about six. 
All right, he talked about six different ones, not 12. Okay, we are going to keep going. Those of you who need to finish can finish up. It shouldn't take too, too long. We're naming those units from largest to smallest. And the rest of you are going to go ahead and watch a quick video on volume because that's what we're measuring. I'm doing a science experiment. It says here I need one liter of water and three milliliters of food coloring. What is volume? Volume is the amount of space something takes up. It describes how much a container can hold. Measuring cups, measuring spoons, beakers, droppers, and graduated cylinders are all tools we use to measure volume. It's important to measure volume carefully when we cook or when we do science experiments. Otherwise, our projects might not turn out as we planned. We measure volume in units like cups, pints, quarts, or gallons. We also measure in units like milliliters and liters. What are milliliters? A milliliter is a small unit of volume. One milliliter of water won't even fill a small spoon. The abbreviation for milliliter is ML. That carton has 236 milliliters of milk. This can has 355 milliliters of soda. And this bottle has 500 milliliters of water. Hmm, what else is measured in milliliters? Oh, right. This bottle has 400 milliliters of shampoo. Some medicines are measured in milliliters. This is because we only need to take a small amount. Sometimes you want to measure larger volumes. What are liters? No, not that kind of liter, Moby. I mean liter, as in the measurement of volume. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. So that means about 1,000 drops of water make up one liter. The abbreviation for liter is L. It's best to use liters to measure larger volumes. This picture holds one liter of lemonade. It's equal to about four glasses. This bottle holds one liter. That bottle holds two liters of soda. When you need to measure larger amounts, you should use liters. How do you measure volume? For my science experiment, I need one liter of water and three milliliters of food coloring. I'm going to use a measuring cup to measure the water. When you measure the volume of a liquid, the surface will curve. Look at where the bottom of the curve lines up with the numbers on the measuring cup. Now I need three milliliters of food coloring. You can use a dropper to measure milliliters. Remember, look at where the bottom of the curve lines up with the numbers. Uh, it looks like I need a little more. Perfect. My experiment is about how water travels through a plant. So, I'm putting this celery in the red water to see how the water moves. 
Wow, check out the celery, Moby. Wow, how did you do that, Moby? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, so far we have heard about two kinds of systems. The first one from yesterday was the customary system. What was the smallest unit we heard of from yesterday? Do you remember? We didn't hear about cups, but there's one that's a little smaller from yesterday. Ounces, right? O Z C cup. What came after cup? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna just jump right to cup. Pint was next. I don't use pint very often. I don't think of it. Pint and quart. Half gallon. And then just a gallon, right? And a gallon. So today, for the metric system, guess what? We only have two units. Do you remember what they are? What did they, what did you just hear, Matt? Yeah, milliliter. And now, and liters. This out. And a thousand milliliters equals one liter. Right, so. So a lot different. We have a lot more options if we use the customary system than the metric, don't we? Why do you think we're learning both? Why might we be learning both of these systems? They're both volumes, and do you notice when you go to the grocery store, you see both of those units? In the United States, we have both. So you have to be familiar with them. And your recipe might call for a liter or your science experiment, right? Or it might be a pint or a quart. You guys have to know both. In other countries, they might only have one. Usually it's the metric system, right? All right, moving on. Oh, it gets so hot. So. Benchmarks, what is, what is a benchmark? A benchmark is something that helps you remember how much something is. So for me, I think of a baby spoon or an eyedropper to help me think how much a milliliter is. So a milliliter would be a little bit of what you can put in this eyedropper, right? You saw how she did that with the food coloring. So this is a benchmark, something you can think, okay, a milliliter is small, like an eyedropper. A liter, another way to think of that, I think of a water bottle, I have, this is a liter, but for a benchmark, I think I have a better one, sorry. Like a bottle of Budweiser, right? Yeah. Like a bottle of soda. <laughs> if you were to buy, bottle of club soda. Here's a liter of club soda. So this would be a good benchmark for you. Something like this. And here's an eyedropper that might help you. Or a thermos is about a liter. Those are ways to remember what is a liter? What is a milliliter? All right. So I have some containers and maybe you can come up. Sorry. Shouldn't take too, too long. I want you guys to estimate. So for now, we're going to focus, say goodbye to our gallons. And bye bye. Bye we're going to focus on the metric system. So we're going to be thinking of milliliters and liters. And I have three containers. A, B, and C. This is A. And I'm hoping you might be a pin up. I'm gonna have to pin you, right? Probably. And then go back to that. I was very excited about this because their their graph that you were drawing had to do with a coffee cup. Okay. And I did not tell them the answer. So. And I got it all right here right now. 
All right, so I'm gonna pin Mrs. Harrison so you can see what we're looking at. So my question is going to be, and I know you can't see my screen now, so container A, do you think it is more or less than one liter? Container A, write it down in your math spiral. Is this gonna be both more than a liter or less than a liter? Container A. I'll go while you write down more or less, I will fill it up. So I'm gonna fill up my A. I'll be back. All right. Raise your hand if you think that the cup is going to hold more than a liter. Raise your hand if you think it's going to hold less. Okay, let's see. This is a liter. I knew it. I don't know if you can see at home, but it is definitely not more. It is less than a liter. I knew it. So cup A is less than a liter. Okay, what about B? More or less than a liter. You could write that, yeah. All right, I'm going to go fill it up. We're going to pour it in and see what happens. criteria mathematicians I'm glad you're thinking about it but I need you to listen one of our success criteria was to make the best estimate when it comes to liters and milliliters so I don't have a picture but I have the words for you I would like you to tell me what would be better now think of your benchmark let's say a thermos is about a liter like a thermos you might put hot soup in Girls, can I have body? No, we're not doing that. I'm over here. Please. Thank you. Eye droppers about a milliliter or a baby spoon, right, Cooper? Okay, so if I have a large cooler, try to visualize that. Picture that in your mind, a large cooler. You ready, Ellie? 
Which would be a better estimate? Write down in your spiral. Would I be able to fill a large cooler with 20 milliliters of water, or would it be better to use 20 liters of water? Write down your estimate and remember your what did they look like? This is a milliliter, this is a liter. All right. Elena, which one do you think and why? Twenty liters. That's correct. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with her. All right. How do you know? And do what are you filling? Uh, a large what? The fact that it says large tells me I want the larger unit. All right, a water bottle, 400 liters or 400 milliliters? What do you think? Write it down in your math spiral. Astria, what are you thinking? 400 millimeters. Excellent. How do you know? It's because on the video, um, it said that there's 400 millimeters on a, in a water bottle. Oh, you can take so happy. Thank you. Awesome. And milliliters are much smaller than liters. A water bottle could impose 400 of these. No way. All right, juice box, 250 milliliters or 250 liters, Sawyer. Oh. 250 milliliters, how do you know? They're smaller, right? And is the juice box very big? No, all right, bathtub, 40 milliliters or 40 liters? What are you thinking, Mr. Robert? Why? Because a bathtub is pretty big and 40 milliliters won't fill it up. Nope, would not fill it up. You might be able to get your toe wet. All right, sunscreen bottle, 215 milliliters or 215 liters. How about Clara? We're going to look at the top part of this. Page 
So this is what I want you to do on your own. Page 167, you are gonna choose the unit you would use to measure the liquid volume of each. You can write ML for milliliter or L for liter. I want you to do one through four. You have a kitchen sink, a soup spoon, a teacup, and a washing machine. Then I want you to circle the best estimate for a juice container. Would you use a liter or one milliliter? A bowl of soup, 500 liters or 500 milliliters? Okay, that's what I'd like you to do right now. You're gonna work on numbers one through six. Nice, good for you. So That's awesome. Let's see what else we have. Did I do it? That's it. Wow. Our time is good. Okay. You guys are so fast. Lyric. Let's do the first one. Kitchen sink. Did you write ML or L? L? Yes. Correct. Number two, a soup spoon. Yay.
All right, I see some hands are up. Show me on your fingers if you're going to add. Show me on your fingers if you're going to subtract. Show me if you're going to multiply. Show me if you're going to divide. If you said subtract, you are right. How did you know? Elena, what, how did you know to subtract? Pour was the key word. When you pour something, you're getting rid of it, right? So, oh, so you have 900 and you're pouring 500 milliliters. So you're getting rid of it. And also it asks how many are left. So what? Are, how many are left? 400 ml. Okay, let's try the next one. Mr. Rojo put six liters of fuel into a gas can that can hold 10 liters. Then he added more liters to fill the can. How many liters of fuel did he add to the can? So he had six liters. He had to get to 10. How many more do you need to get to 10? Write your answer. Today was metric, the milliliter, and the liter. So I want to see how you're feeling about the milliliter, the eyedropper, and the liter. How are you feeling about those two units for liquid measurement? The middle. So just try to remember the benchmarks. I see you, Max. If you're in the middle, Clara, I see you. If you feel like I don't really know the difference, if you can somehow remember, let me show my kiddos at home. If you think of like a thermos or a big water thing as about a liter or a, a thing of like club soda, and then think of your eyedropper as a milliliter. Try to get those benchmarks in your head. I think that will help you. So today you do not have an exit ticket. Girls and boys, stop please. Today you do not have an exit ticket. You may work on lesson 3.3. If you haven't finished 3.1, go ahead and go start there because I want you to get that fraction feel 
if you haven't figured that out already. And then uh, you have 3.2 and 3.3. It's all on liquid measurement. I have erased, Clara, this is good for you to hear too. I have erased, except for my class, I'm not done. All of Mrs. Harrison's class, I've gotten rid of all the other assignments except for the new trimester. So you will see in your things to do list, everything's gonna be gone except for 3.1, 3.2 and 3.3. So feel good, I'm giving you a fresh start because report cards go home today. So we're starting fresh and it's a good chance for you to get caught up with Think Central. Any questions before I let you go? Any questions? Okay, my exit tickets go in the classwork basket. And good job, Mrs. Harrison's class. I will miss you and I will see you next year. I'll see you on Zoom. And you guys, I will see you on Zoom. Bye. Bye.